I'm definitely not the strict morning regiment type. I don't have a uh, set things that I like to do, but usually this is how I like to start my day. Normally I roll out of bed anywhere between 7 to 8 a.m. if I'm not fishing. I give the wiener a nice little lucky pat on the belly. Always have to start the day with that. Out of the room, make myself a cup of coffee, of course. Once the joe is made, it's on to breakfast. I'm pretty basic. I like ham, egg, cheese, that's about it. Today we're doing uh, eggs and bacon, but we're doing like a, a bit of a scramble. And so coffee, nice balanced protein filled breakfast. And then usually it's on to the office where I'm at now. Usually I come in here and I write down what my day is gonna look like. If I don't write down in this notebook, then I usually can't get it done. There's something so gratifying about writing down a task or a goal and then crossing it off. And sometimes my goals are as simple as take out the trash. By the way, we also did this morning and for whatever reason I couldn't find my shoes. So I used my fiance Kaylee's Birkenstocks, which don't fit very well. One thing that I, I wrote down just now that dawned on me that would be an awesome video is take care of the elephant in the room, or I guess in this case, the elephant in the backyard, that being my slowly deteriorating backyard pond. My pond has lost over probably five to six feet of water. And that leaves one huge question and problem. And that question is, what are we gonna do with all these bass and these fish that we stocked over the past couple of months? Trying to figure out a solution for the bigger bass and the crappie and the bigger bluegill. We have found some neighbors, thankfully, who are nice enough to open their doors to allow us to take some of our healthy fish and relocate them in their much more sufficient and healthier ponds nearby. So that's kind of my plan with the big fish. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the smaller fish. The thing is, is this April and May, the bass that I had stocked previously successfully spawned. So we've got quite a decent amount of little tiny juvenile bass in there, future potential giant 10 pounders. I need to figure out a home for them. So I thought I'd get a little creative instead of relocating them to some stranger's pond, I figured we'd figure out a solution right here in my very office. So I'm gonna write down some more notes, cross some things off, and we're gonna get on with our day. I'll meet you guys out in the real world. Let's do this. Well, it appears Texas has not got the memo that it is winter. Stepped outside in a long sleeve shirt and a uh, pair of pants and boots and instantly I'm sweating. In order for us to catch some of the smaller bass that are, that are in the pond, which by the way, are a result of spawning that took place, I believe either in April or May of this year. Pretty incredible, we stocked fish in there. They thrive so much that they were reproducing in what is essentially a backyard ditch. So in order to catch those fish, we're gonna need something like this. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite genres of fish traps. They're very inexpensive. You can find these at Walmart, Academy, Dick Sporting Goods, Bass Pro Shop. They carry them everywhere and they're fairly inexpensive. I believe I got this one for maybe $8. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that little tiny hole right there is the entrance point in which a small bait fisher minnow goes through and then for whatever reason can't find when trying to escape. It's a weird little contraption. It's basically just a, a, a cutout wire cylinder and then what you have here is a cone with a small entrance point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this trap, set it in the pond. So what we'll do is we'll set this trap, go run some errands, go grab some stuff, for you locating these fish and then come back and hopefully after a couple hours we will have at least caught one micro juvenile bass that is the goal now you're probably wondering what are we going to use for bait today simple answer dog food specifically millie and lucky's dog food this is probably one of the most readily available minnow baits that you can find anywhere you go and for whatever reason the bass and the bluegill absolutely love it in my pond and they're not even pellet trade so we're going to load the trap up and uh, head down to the pond to see if we can get things kicked off It really is sad, you know? This has been something that I've wanted to have for many years, probably since I was a kid. When I was younger, probably like six or seven years old, I would dig small little trenches in my parents' backyard and I'd wait for the rain to fill them up and I'd pretend that I had my own little personal pond. For many, many years, I've wanted to have something like this and to see it kind of slowly deteriorate in front of my eyes is, it's, it's hard, you know. It, basically, the individual that dug this out for me, who brought a giant excavator through and, and made this little tiny pond into something much bigger, he had explained that there is the possibility of hitting a bit of rock, which would allow any sort of natural rainwater that accumulates to just slowly seep into the ground. So it's almost as if you've got like a, a hole in your pond. It, it's a weird concept. It's a tough pill to swallow, but I'm doing my best. Um, <laughs> I think the, the lemonade that we can make out of this is to try to keep this legacy going and making sure that we don't necessarily give up all that we've worked on. And there's, you know, there may be a solution. That's where you guys might come into play. I'm all ears. I'm curious to see if you guys have any input or insight on this. For now, let's see if we can trap uh, some juvie bass. 
all that's left to do now is wait. Let's go run some errands in preparation for this whole relocation process. I'm a stubborn individual when it comes to denying the fact that all hope is lost. Seriously, if you guys have any insight, some tips, some ideas as to how we can save this pond, even if it means we dig and start new. You know, I've got eight acres and a lot of that eight acres I don't use. Um, so I was thinking about maybe even starting a new pond back there, something with a liner, maybe we try to hit a well. I don't know, but this pond is something that I was super proud about. It was in a way kind of my baby of the property. And uh, it's just, yeah, I don't need to say it's not doing good, but there's always a silver lining, hope, hope upon the horizon. And I'm hoping, uh, like I said, we can make some fresh lemonade out of these stinky lemons. All right, let's uh, head over to Civilization. I'll meet you guys at, uh, I believe, Petco. That'll be our first spot. Well, we've got the goods. I don't know how much that was. I think it was a little over $200. I went ahead and got, instead of just a fish tank, I got a fish tank and the kit. So it comes with the topper, the 30 gallon filter, along with some other tiny accessories. There's the hull, it's looking good. I believe that was, actually, I'll tell you how much that was. My phone should let me know. Where is my phone at? Oh, I'm holding my phone. <laughs> Everything I purchased here um, roughly came out to about $300 and that, is A through Z. That means filter, replacement filters, um, ammonia reducer, phosphate filter, little carbon strips as well, thermometer, small net, food. I don't know what I'm gonna feed these little bass, so I actually went ahead and got some tiny mealworms. I got a gravel sifter as well. And of course, the fish tank, which is the most expensive thing. I believe that was $140, but the nice thing about this is that it's a kit. So we're gonna head back to the crib right now, set this thing up, and hopefully we, uh, we find some little bass in our fish trap that we set. So the longer that we wait, the uh, the better the odds are that we capture something and, and get to bring it home and put it in the office and keep the legacy going. Wow, left at 11, got back at 437. We've got a better homes and garden, like a square organizer, like one of these like cube organizer things. It's obviously not meant for a fish tank, but it's got a total weight capacity of, I believe 120 pounds. So this will work and it's inexpensive and you can get it at Walmart. If you can get it at Walmart, then it's probably gonna be the move. Just because there's Walmarts everywhere and usually they're pretty cheap. Now for the fun parts, we gotta go to the pond and see if any of our little pet bass took the bait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the fish now before the sun sets, keep them in a bucket, put it in there temporarily. And then once that water is fully A1 ready to go, we'll transport them from pond to bucket, bucket, to fish tank and it'll just be one giant cycle. I'm looking forward to this, hopefully it works. My mission here is to keep the legacy going. The little fish, the little bass that are in here came from the bass that I stocked. In other words, they're native. This is where they were born. They don't know a world outside of this pond. With that being said, I'd like to keep at least a couple of those very tiny juvenile bass, which should be about this big right now. Hopefully once I figure my out and once we get this pond up and running again, I can then stock them back to where they came from. That all aside, let's go check out the pond and see if we have any fish. I just filled up the bucket with some water, some of the pond water. That is not, you know, not aquafine or anything like that. And voila, the aerator is running. So we've got oxygenated pond water ready to go for transport from the pond to my office. All right, let's see if all that hard work paid off. It's time for action. Okay. You got any takers? Oh yeah, no, we do. There's a couple in here. Oh my God, I cannot believe that. <laughs> what are they? Oh my God, we got a couple bass. This is insane. <laughs> I can't believe this. We actually have a couple little tiny bass. They're a lot smaller than I anticipated. Holy moly. All right, I'm gonna put them in this little net right here and transport them to the bucket. We pulled it off, this is so exciting. <laughs> got him, got him, got him. All right, I'm gonna go up there and put him in the bucket. We did it! <laughs> I did not think we'd be able to pull that off, but with a bit of uh, dog food, intuition, and some hard work, we managed, actually caught more than I anticipated. Let me turn the aerator off real quick so you guys can get a glimpse of what we have in here. Those, in fact, are all largemouth. That is so freaking cool. I'm, I don't know what to do, I'm like shocked. I didn't think that would actually work. I'm so glad we got a little bass and uh, they're looking happy and healthy. Their eyes are so big too. Such interesting little fish when they're that tiny. They don't look anything like the bass I'm used to catching, of course, other than their size, but 
just their overall look is, uh, is quite unique. Well, I ran into a slight dilemma. I, uh, I didn't realize, I didn't really think about this when I first bought the fish tank and started this whole project, that you need pretty much a, a stand, a table, some sort of shelf that can withstand hundreds of pounds in order to put a fish tank on top of it. The design is great for this because I can put tools and accessories that I need to maintain this fish tank all throughout here without it looking very nasty or messy. But what I didn't think about is the weight capacity for this here shelf, which by the way is only 100 pounds. We have a 29 slash 30 gallon tank, which equates to roughly 248 pounds. So uh, what I did is I used the minute amount of Craftsman skills that I have and we added some reinforcements to this just with some two by fours and I stood on top of it with two 45 pound weights and it held up just fine. So that's my test. I don't know if it's necessarily gonna hold. Uh, we may have to find a better solution later on down the road, but I, just for the sake of getting this video knocked out today and putting our little bass in this tank, safe and sound, this is the solution that I've come up with. It's not ideal, but you gotta roll with your punches sometimes. Oh boy, that was quite a process to say the least. So kind of want to walk you guys through the process there, how I made this happen. So of course I modified this little Walmart chest cubby deal, whatever you want to call it. Seems to be working great. Two by fours are holding the tank just fine. We have a full 29 gallons of water in the tank. Um, before filling up the tank with water though, I added pea gravel and some chunky gravel mixed in with some sand substrate. I don't know if that's the best for largemouth, but just based upon my prior knowledge as to what largemouth like, those are the three that stand out to me. So that's what I went with. Um, I rinsed those off with tap water to make sure there wasn't any sediment, then nicely and neatly placed them where I kind of wanted throughout the, the fish tank. And after that, we added some uh, fake seaweed just for cover and structure for the fish to hang around. And of course, and of course it couldn't be an official fish tank without SpongeBob's pineapple. I figured we'd add that in there also to uh, also to pay homage to the old bass, Gary, who uh, was actually my first pet bass many years ago, who unfortunately is no longer with us. But maybe we'll have a Gary 2.0 with this tank build. So after laying out the substrate and rinsing off and placing all of the structure per se, I went one by one with a about a gallon and a half bucket uh, filling this tank up. It took probably about I want to say 20-ish trips, but we got it done. So instead of using a hose or an apparatus, we just did the old-fashioned way. Go to the sink, fill up a bucket, come back, dump it, and rinse and repeat, quite literally. All the while doing this, I've got my thermometer in the bucket to measure to see what the temperature of the bucket water is in which the fish are dwelling in. It's roughly 62 degrees. So I want to match that temperature with this tank. I have nothing to acclimate them with. It's not like I'm bringing a fish home from a fish tank and I, I don't have a bag to, to place them in so I could slowly acclimate them to the, the water temperature in the tank. So I've got the water temperature roughly around 64, 63, which in my opinion is close enough. I'd rather have it right on the dot, but obviously that's quite difficult. I got the diffuser and the aerator installed just to make sure they worked. I plugged them both in. They both turned on, so we're good to go there. Um, I did notice that I think I might have gotten too large of a rock and diffuser. So right now I'm temporarily using my minnow bucket diffuser uh, with the stone, the tiny little aeration stone. And it seems to be working just fine. These, again, these are all just temporary solutions for the time being until we figure out something better. Fish tank's full, we got everything in place. All the necessities are set and ready to go. The only thing left to do is to treat the water. So what I did is I used a bit of this quick start. Many years ago, I used the same exact stuff to condition the water for Gary's pool. I basically filled up a, a, a kiddie pool with a bunch of municipal water, and I dumped a bunch of this stuff in there, and it worked out great. I put a little bit of that in there, and then I topped it off with some stress coat. So we did a, a bit of both. We matched the dosage with the size of the tank. So we're looking pretty good. Everything's set and ready to go. I think it's time, the moment you all have been waiting for, to take our little bass and put them in the, in, in the tank, in their new home. So we've got all four little jimmies in the bucket and they're gonna be the new members of my office and hopefully one day be restocked in the pond once the pond is looking a little bit better and once we find a solution. Without further ado, folks, drum roll please. Let's get after it. Come on, guys. Don't be wily. I'm gonna give you a much better home now. First one going in. Come on, buddy. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> That's so sick. Look at him. 
There goes another one. Oh, come on. There he goes. There we go. Gotcha. Fell for it. There's number three. Oh, did I get you? No, I did not get you. Do I? Oh yeah, I've got you. Perfect. There we go. There we go. They are so tiny. It is incredible to think that the bass in my pond that I stocked made these little dudes. What also just dawned on me too is I don't really know if these all came from the same litter. If these are all from the same hatch. They might be from different bass. I don't know how many bass spawned. All I know is maybe April, May, I saw at least four to five beds. So these bass could, could have different parents, which is kind of exciting. The genetics could be all over the place. I'm, I'm really, really excited to see how this goes down. I'm a little tentative too. Bass are aggressive. Four little bass in one tank might not be the best move, but we have to try something. And we caught four bass today, and that's four bass that are now safe from droughts. This is something that will keep us busy on days when we're not fishing, we're contemplating ways to, to fix the whole pond debacle. But yeah, this is really cool. If you guys have some name ideas for these four little dudes, drop some comments down below. I think we need to keep the, the Gary legacy going, so I might name one of these guys Gary. But other than that, I'm all yours. Drop some comments, let me know what we should name these guys. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm very excited. I appreciate the view. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you like videos like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never.